Hello and welcome back to another video. There is someone doing yard work outside so I hope you can't hear that or we could just ignore it because I really want to film this video and this is the only chance I have. So today I have my June wrap up. In June I read 15 books. I don't know how this is the first month in my life that I've ever read 15 books in a month so this is a special video. <laughs> I decided to do my wrap up because people have been following me on Twitter and Instagram and so I feel like this is for the people. <laughs> for the first week of June, I ended up reading eight books for the Queer Lit Readathon and I have a whole reading vlog dedicated to that and I have my thoughts after I read. So basically that's a wrap up. So that will be up here and down below if you want to go and watch it. So I'm not gonna be talking about those books because I talk about them in that video, but I am gonna be talking about the books that I read for Summerathon and Buzzwordathon and just everything else that I read. So if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't. I make bookish videos with a twist every Wednesday so I would love for you to become a paperback pal and join me. So let's get started because I have a lot of books to talk about. So first I'm going to talk about the book that I finished after Queer Lit Readathon and this is a book that was on my TBR. I started it but I never ended up finishing it. I listened to this on audio and I had the physical and this is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I can just feel everybody clapping and just smiling and so happy that I finally can say I read this. I absolutely loved this. The hype is so real like super real. I wasn't sure about this book while I was reading it. I was listening to it on audio and I highly suggest to listen to this on audio. The audio was fantastic and I feel like it just brought the book to life. So this is about Evelyn Hugo who is a fictional movie star and it just talks about her life. She asks this journalist named Monique to write her life story and it's so interesting. Monique was one of my least favorite characters because she annoyed me so much because Evelyn was giving her this big break and she just didn't want it and she was so confused and I was like please just take this like stop. Monique was the only person that Evelyn wanted to write this and just the fact that she was not grateful for it really just pissed me off and I just wanted the whole book to be Evelyn and Monique's parts really pissed me off. Obviously if you read it it all comes full circle and I just highly suggest to read this book. It was so good. Sorry, I had to change the angle because the lighting was just not working for me. But while I was reading this, it was definitely a three or four star for me until I hit the end and the end really sold me on a five star. I was kind of hesitant because I was like, if I don't give this a five star, what are people gonna say about me? But honestly, it's definitely a five star from me. Like it was so good. And I rate more on the experience rather than if this book is a five star, it depends. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, this wasn't a five for me. It was definitely a four, but this was a big five. Like it was so good. I can't wait to read more of Taylor Jenkins Reid. I just love when authors just make up like a whole story for somebody. Like that is so interesting to me. And I feel like that is talent. So Taylor Jenkins Reid, she is so talented. Next, I'm getting to the books for Buzzwordathon. If you haven't seen my TBR for June, I had my cat pick my TBR. So these are most of the books that my cat picked for me. For the Queer Lit Readathon, she didn't pick, but for the rest, she did. So for Buzzwordathon, I only ended up reading one book. I think I was just burnt out after reading eight books in one week that I was just taking it slow. Um, <laughs> taking it slow, but I've read 15 books whatever. For Buzzwordathon, the buzzword was you, so I had to pick books with you or your in the title. I ended up reading I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver, and I gave this a five star. This book is about a non-binary teen named Ben, and they get kicked out of their house when they come out as non-binary to their parents, and they have to go and live with their sister and start a new life for themselves. I could totally relate to this. It was so good. I ended up listening to this on audio because I was filming a video at the time and I had to listen to an audiobook. This video was reading Routines Control My Day, so it will be in the cards above and it will also be linked down below if you want to go and watch it. I ended up reading some of this, but I ended up finishing it, I think, like sometime during the readathon. I really enjoyed it. If you want an own voices novel, I highly suggest this one. It is definitely worth the hype. It's a debut novel and I could not believe it was debut because it was just written so well. It also has a romance and it was just great, but there is a trigger warning for gender dysphoria, transphobia, and 
just toxic parents, like parents not being accepting and all of that stuff, but I just enjoyed it so much. This kind of reminded me of Symptoms of Being Human by Jeff Garvin, so if you like that book, I highly suggest this one. Next is a book that I had on my TBR for Buzzwordathon, but I didn't finish it in Buzzwordathon, and this is You Ass Are Perfect by Laura Silverman. I gave this a three star because I just wasn't a fan. This is about Ariel who is a bisexual Jewish teen and he is obsessed with his grades. He is trying to get valedictorian at his school and he is in honors and AP classes and he's just always stressed about school. The main theme of this book is being stressed over school. This is Laura Silverman's sophomore novel. I read her debut novel and I really enjoyed it and I just really like her as an author because of her writing and the way she incorporates things into her books. I like this because she didn't just say that the character was Jewish and then brush it off. We actually got to see all the rituals and just the things that they do like going to the synagogue and having dinners and like eating Jewish things like the matzo bowl soup which is actually in the book like there's a recipe at the end which I really enjoyed. Um, so I liked that because I didn't know much about being Jewish besides the fact that they celebrate Hanukkah and that's all I knew. So I like this book for the representation because now I know more about that and for the purpose that it is a queer book I would suggest it for the queer representation but the only problem I have with this book is that I couldn't relate to the main character because he was just so obsessed with his grades and when I was in high school I wasn't the type of student that cared that much and I wasn't in honors classes or AP so I couldn't relate to him at all and I just felt like he was whiny and annoying. There's a scene where he fails a quiz and he is still has like an A in the class but he's freaking out and he's embarrassed to get a tutor and he's like such a dick to the tutor and I just didn't like that and it's supposed to be a tutoring romance but the romance felt rushed and just this wasn't a book for me like this is definitely a disappointment because I was excited for it because the cover is so cool. I'm gonna keep this just for the cover but I'm sad I didn't like it. I would recommend it though if you want a queer book or if you could just relate to anything. I recommended this in my last video which was the A to Z queer lit recommendations where I recommended a book for every letter of the alphabet that is queer and I forgot Q but it's fine. So if you want more queer lit recommendations I highly recommend to go over to that video. Next I picked up a library book that I've just been seeing and I wanted to read this book and it has queer representation so I was like this is perfect and this is one of my favorite books of the year. It is The Music of What Happens by Bill Koingsberg. I absolutely loved this. It was so good. I highly recommend this. It's very underrated. This is about Jordan and Max and Jordan is reopening his father's food truck. His father passed away and he is trying to deal with the grief and his mom is just not doing well and he is basically trying to save his family. Like he is just the guy that has to do everything and so basically they're opening the food truck to get money for the rent because the rent is due and they will get evicted from their house. So it's like a fight or flight situation. Enter Max who walks up to the food truck and Jordan's mom gives him the job just randomly because she quits the food truck. So this is a romance in a food truck and the whole book surrounds the food truck and it's set in summer and it was just such a perfect read. This book also tackles the subject of sexual assault. We rarely get to see books where a man is sexually assaulted and I really enjoyed seeing that, especially a gay man. Um, this was so great. It's also a very bro book and I've been searching for this so that's why I love this book. Like I could just feel it so much. Like I loved it. Oh my god, it was so good. I just loved everything about it and I am going to have this on my best books of the year so look out for that. Highly recommend to pick this up. It was so good. I could talk about this for hours. I read the anthology Summer Days and Summer Nights edited by Stephanie Perkins. I gave this a three and a half star because I didn't love it. Like I didn't think that all of the stories were good. I think I was just kind of getting sick of reading love stories by this point. Like these are all love stories but some of them were just annoying. I listened to this on audio because someone on my TBR video suggested it and thank you because it was so good. I gave the audiobook a five star because it was a full cast and it just made me really enjoy the stories more. Um, but for the book purpose, I gave it a three and a half star because I didn't like all of the stories. Some of my favorites were the one by Libba Bray, Veronica Roth, and Tim Federal. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, but I loved those ones. 
And I really like the one by Jennifer e. Smith. I gave that a five star and I've never given anything of hers a five star. That book had Asperger's representation and I really loved that. I feel like that story really encompassed what this anthology was. So I really enjoyed that one, but the other ones were just mediocre. I will have my Goodreads review down below if you want to know more of my thoughts. And this was for the challenge to read a book with sunrise colors on the cover. The next book I read completed a few challenges, but primarily this was to read a book with food on the cover. And I read Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welsh. I gave this a four star. I listened to it on audio and I really love the audio. It, this really reminded me of the book 13 Little Blue Envelopes by Maureen Johnson. I really liked this because it just really took you around Italy and I've never been to Italy or have I read a book set in Italy. I just really enjoyed that. This is about a girl named Lena whose mother tragically dies from cancer and she is sent to Italy to live with her dad who she's never met and her mom gives her this journal before she dies and it is just her life story and she's just learning about her mom through that and like her life in college and everything. She was a famous artist and it was just really cool. My only problem was that one of the characters mentioned that this was set during a week and I didn't even know that until one of the characters said that. Um, she was like falling in love with somebody and she was like, oh, I can't believe I've only known him for five days and like now I'm in love with him and I'm like, what? Like this, I thought that this book was set during like a month. I'm like, all of this has happened in a month. Like this was too much for a week. Um, and then at the end of the week, she decides that she's going to like stay there. And I'm like, wait, you have only been here a week. Like what is happening? Like this was just too much for me. But overall, I enjoyed it. I really want to pick up Love and Luck because that is the companion. And I just want to read more of her books. I really enjoyed it. It was so fun. And for contemporary purposes, it was a really good contemporary. And the last book I read was to cover a bunch of challenges, but this was primarily to read a beachy read. And this was Nantucket Blue by Layla Howland. I enjoyed this. It was a four star for me. This is about a girl named Cricket who has the summer planned out for her. Her and her best friend Jules are gonna go to Nantucket and they're gonna have a great summer. They're gonna get jobs and they're gonna just have the best summer. But a tragedy strikes Jules' family and Cricket is not allowed to go to Nantucket with them anymore. So basically she just tries to find out a way to go. And this reminded me of the summer it turned pretty, but I feel like it was better. Like, I really enjoyed this. Um, she ends up becoming a chambermaid, basically like working at a hotel and being a maid. And that was so cool. Like I really enjoyed seeing that. And this is like a series or a duology. I have the other book and I am gonna pick it up. The only problem I had with this book is that there was just a lot of problems going on. And I feel like the author should have just stuck to a couple um, and then still made it like a beachy read. Um, it was just, there was a lot going on. Also, Jules was a horrible character. Like, I understood that she was grieving, but she was just really being a bitch. And, like, it was just not cool. Like, I was so sick of her. Um, she was really a horrible character. And there was really no character development in this book. And so it was just mediocre for me. Um, but yeah, it was okay. Like, I was glad I read it. It was good. It was a good summary read, but... It was just okay. So those are all the books I read for the rest of the month. If you guys participated in any of these readathons or if you've read any of these books, let me know your thoughts down below. Also, I want to still do a May wrap up. I totally forgot to do it, but I do have some books. So if you would like to see it, comment down below and let me know. I am going to be having a secret TBR, so that's not going to be up until I finish all the books for that. But I will have up my biannual Bibliothon TBR and my TBR for the Reading Crush. So look out for those. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't to become a paperback pal. I also have a Patreon if you want to support me on there. Thank you all for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.